Welcome to another Fantasy Grounds Unity video. I'm going to show off the new grid distance measurements that we have. So I have the Sword Coast map from the Lost Mine of Pandelver. If I go to grid, now you'll see I have a few different options. I have a hex grid set for 57.1, which seems to line up the grid fairly accurately. Uh, and then I kind of adjusted it so that it lined up as well as possible. Uh, here you have either raw distance mode or grid based mode. And then you can set the distance multiplier. I've got five, every uh, square or every grid will be five miles in this particular case. Uh, normally it's gonna be five uh, feet and you'll see the little feet indicator, but yeah, you can make it inches, one inch or two inch or whatever you wanna do. Uh, so here it says one hex equals five, just set it equal to whatever your scale is. And now that I have that, uh, I can do some really cool stuff with it. So if I wanted to measure, say, the distance between uh, Mount Hatana and Thunder Tree, uh, or just any two squares. So here's two squares. I can say uh, right click and say pointers. And now uh, I can draw from this hex to this hex. You see it's going to go center to center. That's 20 miles. There's 25. If I go at an angle, uh, it'll calculate it for me uh, based off of grid spacing. If you wanted to go to raw distance, turn this on. raw distance, there we go. So that's 22.9 miles. And let's go back to play mode. So you can see as I move it around, uh, it's gonna by default snapping into, into different spaces. That's because I have grid snap turned on. If I don't want that, then I can make it more free flowing. And I can go from the center to this edge here, to this edge here. So it gives you a lot of kind of variety and flexibility here. Uh, so uh, that gives you the exact mileage. <clears throat> the other thing you can do is, let's remove that pointer, you know, so you can use that to measure, say, uh, the distance from uh, Mount Hatana here down to Thunder Tree. You can say, well, that's 27.1 miles away. Just very nice and convenient. Uh, the other thing you can do is remove my pointers, uh, is if you have a player token on the map, you can use that to basically allow the players to move, and then the players could basically plot out and say, so, okay, we want to go here, and then after that, we want to, uh, you know, oops, I did that the wrong way. Move pointer. So, uh, excuse me for that. <laughs> so, you're going to basically click here and Alt. Yeah, there we go. So, they're going to move to here, and then from here, they might move up to this area, and then over, uh, and then around. There we go. So that's 98.1 miles for that whole trip. And then you could even say, well, what if we don't want to go to Mount Hontanaw first? If we cut that out of the trip, we can go here, or we can just uh, right click and delete that waypoint. That's a new feature. Uh, or we just want to jump straight to an area, uh, you're there. Or if you wanted to add a new waypoint, you can just you know, move things around however you want, basically. All right, so those are the new distance measurements, grids. Uh, the second feature that we added in, new feature, is under the assets window. We just really cleaned this up. Uh, now there's no more scrolling up and down. There's basically, you just kind of uh, click on the arrows left and right as you're navigating through. Another nice feature is you'll see here, um, if I wanted to click, let me grab a little bit nicer looking tokens. Let's say... Uh, yeah, these are probably fine. So some fiery dragon ones. All right, so here I can, uh, you know, view a preview of that particular one. If I go to my images, and let's say I wanted to grab um, maybe like a sewer map one. So if I wanted to use, this is a tile, but let's say I wanted to use this one. I can now zoom and I can look and see what that's going to look like. And I can import this into my campaign and now it's ready for me to start using right away. Uh, if I wanted to go to, let's go up to the root, let's look for Lost Mine or uh, let's look for something that I don't even have loaded. So I think I've got like Horde of the Dragon Queen. Yeah. So I could go directly to Horde of the Dragon Queen. Even though I don't even have this module loaded, I could just grab, all right, this looks cool. This looks like a little adventuring map. Uh, I could import that to my campaign, and now I'm ready to use this particular map. Or any of these, you know, basically anything that you wanted to use 
if I have a, let's see, trail. Okay, I got a lot of different trail maps here that I could use. There we go. Import that into the campaign and you're ready to go. So you don't even have to drag it to the image section. You can just use it straight away. So yeah, hopefully you'll like that. Um, and it, everything is basically set up so you can zoom. If it's bigger, it'll show it bigger. If not, then, uh, you know, it, it is what it is basically. Um, if I want to look at, let's see, a campaign map. You know, you can zoom and grow these a little bit. All right, the other feature that we added in was something that Carl added for uh, our FX layers. And so if you remember before you went to FX and you would select from the different options available and we included what our default kind of setting was. And this is what you see here. However, now you've got sliders for each one. So I can adjust the amount of rain or the intensity. I can make it a really heavy rain, the speed of it, um, direction. I can shift it you know, coming in from this direction or this direction. So lots of different options you can do. Each one of the effects layers will have things that make sense for that specific effect and what you'll be able to modify. The other thing that's really interesting and cool is that now you'll notice the rain is all over the entire map. We don't want that, so we want to enable a mask by clicking this button. And now I'm going to go to uh, the area that I would like to reveal. And if you just draw a box, you'll see it's just going to rain in this area. So I wanted to do that freeform with reveal mode on. So I'm going to hold down Alt, and I'm basically just going to kind of trace a line around very quickly, not worried about being overly precise at this point. Just very quickly give me an outdoor map. And it's additive, so I can continue to adjust it. So if I've you know made a mistake, I can go back and I can say, okay, I want to hide this area uh, maybe right here a little bit more, I can kind of cut it down. Or if I wanted to go a little farther into the cave, I can. So now you've got this really cool example to where when the player is playing, the player can, you know, be in the rain and then they can step out and then they can see, oh, it's raining outside the cave where I am and it's nice and warm inside. If you were to add other areas, let's say I've got uh, a fire pit here. Let me move up into the fire pit. Um, and let us say... I guess I should reveal all the bad guys here. Let's say you're sitting around a fire and, and there's some you know, fire effect there, then you could theoretically add an effects layer just for this and make it smoky, for instance. So let's, let's do that. Let's add a mist layer here. And let's say, okay, well, we're gonna reveal, uh, add a mask first. And we're just gonna reveal this area here. See, it's really smoky. All right, so it's really smoky in here, but uh, we don't want the smoke to go over top of certain areas. We want it to kind of block. So then you could go back and say, okay, we'll hide this area. And uh, yeah, so there you go. That's an example of how you can mix and match different effects, come up with some kind of cool cool features uh, that you can employ, employ for your maps. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.